Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Claudia! Claudia! I'm in the living room, David. Oh, amazing. That's exactly where I left you a half hour ago. Take off your hat and stay a while. Come on in. Come on in. Oh, yeah, bite shrewdly. It is a cold and nipping air. Well, certainly nice and warm in front of the fire. Are you really still sitting at that desk? I really, really are. I've never known you to sit still in one place so long. What you doing? Oh, just things. Mm. Must be pretty fascinating things. Mm. Pretty dull things. But a great many things. Yes, mm. you're right there. You sat right down after dinner, and it's uh, half past eight now. Well, I'll be through in a little while, darling. I'm just cleaning out my desk. Oh. Mostly bills, of course. Honestly, they accumulate, so it's absolutely... How's the car? Oh, Majesty seems very placid, munching her hay. Sent you her regards between munches. Oh, no, I wish I'd walked up to the barn with you. But I knew if I didn't set myself down to my desk right after dinner, I'd fritter instead. Well, Majesty understood. Say, David, when's she going to have her calf? Oh. she hurry up? That's one thing you can't hurry up. No, I suppose not. She'll be coming around the first of the year, not a minute sooner. Well, I certainly hope she doesn't do it behind my back. Calving, I mean, you know. Why? Well, I don't want to miss it. What's your big hurry? I just paid the dairy bill. It seems to me it's about time I had a glass of homemade milk and a dish of <laughs> homegrown butter and a pitcher of home stuff. You are a mercenary female. I am? You certainly are. Here I thought you were interested in Majesty's calf purely for sentimental reasons. Well, that too, uh, but... You can't bluff me. You don't give a hoot about the blessed event for itself. You just want Majesty's milk. Well, now, know. is that too much to ask of a cow? Now, please be quiet. Gladly. I am busy. Too uh, busy for... Uh, for what? Ooh, for a slight token of affection and esteem, perhaps. Oh, I'm never too busy for that. You're now. sure now? Positive, mm. absolutely positive. Oh. Mm. You smell of the barn. I like it. That's good. Hey, don't go away. Don't yeah, go away. you're busy, remember? Oh, these old bills, they bore me. And finish up with them. I hate paying bills. It's not just the money, either. <laughs> much it isn't. Much is right. It's much money. Well, pay them. It's already the sixth of the month. Four more days and we'll be dispossessed. David, that's not really true. About the tenth of the month, I mean. Mm, off goes the gas, off goes the electricity, off goes the phone. We think of all the money we save. Pollyanna. But... Oh, I suppose I might just as well pay these old bills. I'll be hounded by me creditors, as they say in the melodramers. I won't speak another word to you now. David, ahead. don't say such a thing. It depresses me. Hey. Hey, what? Hey, you left your pipe on the mantel. So? So? I'm telling you now so you won't interrupt me later. That's uh, very sweet of you. Well, I'm a very sweet girl. Now, get on back to your work, you remember? David, are you going to read the stock market? What's it to you? Because if our stocks have gone down again, don't tell me we can't afford it. David, you know, it's funny. They never go up, do they? What goes down must have been up. Yes, but what is down, David, doesn't have to go up. Mm, very funny. You know, I don't think we can afford stocks. Certainly not with all these bills we have to pay. They don't have anything to do with each other. Well, they're both money, aren't they? Mm, yes. Yes, money we haven't got, aren't they? Aren't they? I refuse to get into a financial conversation with you. You hear me? What's the matter? Do you think I don't understand? I don't think you want to understand. But you do understand all too well. David, you're so... Now, write out those checks. We'll go to bed, okay? Well, that's the first decent thing you said to me all day. Listen, David, even mentally, you better not buy any more stocks, even, even with a margin. The expression happens to be on margin. Oh, what's the difference? I don't have any intention of buying any. Now, you stick to your onions. Oh, onions is right. You should see our grocers, Bill. It's disgusting. Well, don't talk about it. Just pay it. I am paying it just as fast as I can. Listen, David, it doesn't hurt if I talk about it, too, does it? Mm -hmm. Hurts me. Where are the matches? Take the yeah. pipe out of your mouth, David. I can't understand a word you're saying. Mm, doesn't matter. Matters to me. 
Seems like an awful waste of energy to me to talk and not let people understand what you're saying. But, of course, it's a free country. Where are the matches? When I look at this pile of bills, it doesn't seem that very much in the country is free. We're doing all right. You mean the country or us? Both. Oh. There, I thought you wanted to be quiet. I'm being quiet. Can't you hear? I've only said a few words. Listen, will you look at this bill from the peanuts? Honestly, some people certainly are cheapskates. What's the matter? Didn't they charge you enough? Huh. They are, they are, they are exorbitant. And at these prices, 75 cents. Can you imagine for a jacket, 75 cents? Only had three spots on it. It was a little dirty around well, the Maybe cuffs. they charge you 25 cents a spot. Well, go ahead. Finish your sentence, Claudia. I am. For 75 cents, the least they could do is supply a stamped envelope, wouldn't you think? But no, I even have to supply the stamp. Tell me, how did you ever get to be such a tightwad? I'm not a tightwad. No. You just don't like to part with money, is that it? That's all. I see. Well, so much for the cleaners. Now for the butcher. Oh, I hate to look. Would you like me to take over that job? No, it's all right, David. Mm -hmm. Every life, a little rain must fall. Only in this life, it's pouring tonight. Now, let me see, let me see. The butcher, the butcher, the... Huh, just as I... Oh, outrageous. Well, why don't you tell him? I have. Oh, good Lord. I won't feel safe walking down Main Street past the butcher. Oh, shop. don't worry, darling. It's all right. He agreed with me. David, you know, I don't think you have any idea just how expensive life is. Well, you were giving me a rough idea. Well, life is very expensive. Believe me. Trouble is, seems to be getting expensive every day. More expensive every day. Well, I'm glad you finally agree with me. Oh, we'll stop worrying about it. Unless you worry because it doesn't cost you anything to worry. Well, I'm not worried, David. I'm just a little irritated, that's all. Oh. Then stop thinking about it so much. Mm -hmm, that's not we so do easy. the best we can, and that's the best we can do. Well, that's logical, I guess. We don't live extravagantly. Mm -hmm. We don't go to nightclubs or spend money on nonsense. No. You, you you don't spend a lot of money on clothes. Matter of fact, I, I wish you'd allow yourself more than you do. David, I don't need any more than I have. Anyway, you know half the fun of shopping is going to sales, and you can't find a really good sale every day. Oh, excuse me, darling. You go, go on with what you're saying. Mm. I didn't mean to... I wasn't saying much. Except there's no reason for you to fuss about the money you spend. It's all for necessities, and... We are managing to save a little besides, so everything's fine. Well, still, I wish we could save more. You never oh, know when you're going to I wish we could, to too, but we can't. Oh, Living sorry. is very expensive. You said so yourself. You know, David, you're very sweet. I'm not sweet. Where are the matches? And sweetness has nothing to do with here they are. Oh, yes, it has. If you weren't sweet, you'd blame me for life being so expensive. Lots of husbands. Blame you? Yeah. That's well, all I can do to make you buy a, a bobby pen. Now, that, that's silly. Besides of which... An accepted fact that living is high today. To such an extent that it's getting more expensive even to live than to die. To die? Yeah. Do, do, do you mean to say it costs money even to die? It does, in a, in a way. David, don't tell me there's a tax on dying. Exactly so. Oh, my God. Tax can go up as high as 60%. 60% after the first 60000 60%. Well, then, if you're rich, then it's almost cheaper to stay alive. Hmm. Honestly, hardly anything's worthwhile these days. Oh, bills, 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 bills. You look at them all over the place. Well, we're a big family. Well, not so big as we're going to be someday. Well, first things first, darling. Take your time. Actually, don't... David, I have figured that the baby doesn't cost us a thing. No, oh, you have, huh? Hmm. Well, how do you uh, figure that? Well, figure it out for yourself. Now, unlike a Great Dane... With a baby, it's not the upkeep, it's the original investment. Oh. Yeah, because after paying the doctor and the hospital and all that, the baby is really not much more expensive than a, a, a good piece of furniture, say. Well, have you told the baby? I'm sure he'd like to know. Now, look, what does it really cost to feed a baby? Practically nothing. What's he eat? Milk. Well, that costs money. Oh, you know perfectly well we'd have milk in the house anyway. And when the cow starts earning away, David, even the milk won't cost us anything. No, no. Wait till you see some of the feed bills we'll have. And they will balance out the money we save on the milk. You follow me? No. no. And what else does the baby eat? Little orange juice, a few old mashed vegetables and things. It doesn't amount to anything at all. And these clothes are all presents he receives. So far they are. So you can see for yourself how people really 
really exaggerate about these things, David. For my money, the baby doesn't cost us a cent at this point. Not well, a cent. That's a pleasant thought. And now take Mama. So I buy an extra chop for Mama. That's not real money, David. No. Or if I have a ham or stew or something, an extra mouth doesn't show at all. And Mama's is a small mouth. Mm. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So you see, David, there... Let's see, one, two, three, four of us. Four of us. You and I, Mama, baby, and we are living as cheaply as two. <laughs> You're almost convincing. Well, I'm only trying to explain this to you because you said that it's because we're such a big family that life is so expensive. Well, now, life is ridiculous. expensive because life is expensive. It's because we're a big family that we feel it. David, are you thinking that we should have a budget? No, I'm thinking no such thing. Oh, good. Because when I get around to deciding I want to have another baby, I wouldn't look at a budget twice. You wouldn't. David, you're not the budgety kind of a man, are you? I certainly am not, and I'm proud of it. So am I. I'll tell you something else, darling. Hmm? The second baby isn't nearly as expensive as the first. You mean it, it's even cheaper? Well, you wouldn't know about it being an only child, but well, you've heard the expression, uh, hand-me-downs. Mm -hmm. It makes quite a considerable difference in the cost of the second child, let me tell you. Well, what do you know? We might even save money, I... We might even make money. Now, wait a minute. Oh, darling. I bet lots of women wish they were married to an unbudgety man like you. Is, uh, is that a proposal of marriage, Mrs. Norton? You may consider it as such, Mr. Norton. Well, I accept. Delighted. Now, uh, forget the rest of the bills for tonight. You mean n not pay them? Tonight. Why, darling, that's a wonderful idea. Let's, uh, put out the light. And go to bed. David, it's very thrifty to turn out the lights. It's very nice to be in the dark with you. When it's time for one of your favorite radio programs, before you sit down to listen, go to the refrigerator and get yourself an inviting, frosty bottle of Coca-Cola. You'll enjoy that interlude in your daily chores more if you listen refreshed. Say, Joe, can you figure finances that way? Oh, you mean uh, one minute life is expensive and right. the next it's cheap? Exactly. Ah, the female approach, David. Fascinating the workings of a woman's mind. The head rules, and then the heart takes over. Well, you're not so tough-hearted yourself. And between you and me and this bottle of Coke, uh, neither am I. Well, it's nothing to be ashamed of. You bet it isn't. Why, you take a crusty old fellow like Jared Tucker. He's crusty, all right. Isn't he? <laughs> he certainly is. Oh, way down deep, he's as sweet as quince jelly. <laughs> Wait till I tell him what you said. Now, you'll see I'm right when you see Jared tomorrow. Tomorrow? That's the seventh anniversary of Pearl Harbor Day, isn't it? Exactly so. See you then, David. Right, Joe. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember... Whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya Starr. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.